Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Agenda Awani. Dan hari ini Agenda Awani kembali membicarakan tentang bola sepak tetapi bola sepak yang jauh di sana iaitu di Barclays Premier League. Saya bertuah kerana mendapat seorang wakil. Beliau adalah orang penting bagi sebuah kelab yang kedua penting selepas kelab saya di kawasan itu. Um, I have to say that in Malay because I don't want Chris to know what I was saying because uh, Cliff... Chris Anderson, who is the head of legal services for Everton FC, comes from the blue side of a city that I like the red side. Not the blue side, but today we're going to come together, Chris, because I need your help to, to, to help Certainly. paint the picture for uh, the, the audience out there of how having a solid, sound and progressive legal uh, structure rules and regulations around the football ecosystem in the mm. England has helped create a better player, a better team, a better competition even, and a better supply chain, not only on the field, mm -hmm. but supporting the field and also commercialise all over the world. Yep. How do you look at that? Uh, well, I, I think you're right. I mean, the, the, the starting point, of course, is that that all sports are based on rules and regulations. Mm. You know, you, you have to have rules. You, you couldn't have a, a football game where one side had 11 players mm. and another side mm. had 22 players. Uh, you've got no sporting contest then. So that, there's, there's that set of on-field rules. Uh, but what people aren't familiar with often is the, the amount and the, the different types of, of off-field rules mm. and off-field mm. laws. If you look at it from the perspective of, of Everton as a, as a Barclays Premier League club, we are subject to English law, uh, mm -hmm. we're subject to the FA's rules yes. because we're a member of the FA, mm -hmm. we're subject to the Premier League's rules because we're a member of the Premier League, okay. we play in European competitions so there are rules of UEFA, mm -hmm. we're part of FIFA who regulate some aspects of the game yes. um, and because FIFA and UEFA are, are uh, based in Switzerland, mm -hmm. we have to take into account Swiss law mm -hmm. and because of course England is part of the European Union, we have to take into account European Union law. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's quite a, a, a large variety of laws and regulations that apply to a football club. Mm -hmm. um, they're not always helpful um, for someone in my <laughs> position, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but um, uh, in, in terms of the things that you were talking mm -hmm. about, the, the laws and regulations set the framework mm -hmm. within which the, the clubs can operate. So some of the things you were, you were talking about, um, the, the Premier League, for example, mm -hmm. um, could only uh, deliver the money it does to, to the mm -hmm. clubs uh, that are its members mm -hmm. on things like television rights yes. because of the, the legal framework as mm -hmm. to how they sell television mm -hmm. rights and the, 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 the contracts that it, that it enters into. Uh, on the other hand, um, the Premier League also has introduced uh, rules and regulations as to how you uh, must develop players and how you must uh, run your academies. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they set a framework for mm -hmm. Uh, the players and the, the, the Ross Barkleys and Wayne Rooney's of the future yes. to, be, to be developed. That's the part I want to come into first before I go to the big million of a billion uh, pounds question <laughs> of the TV rights and all that. How do you produce a Wayne Rooney if you don't have solid system from the grassroots, from the school kids, right up? to the club level. Mm. And I think this is where, and you have traveled extensively across the world to look maybe at this side of the world, where maybe we are lacking because there's no one clear coherent structure that we can run effectively mm. to make that connection. But because clubs in, in, in uh, England, for example, or even in Liverpool and, and in Everton, they are very close to the grassroots because mm. When I go to the social media aspect, you know, mm. even the players can be seen on the ground of a public community, for example. But you have said that that's also in the FA's uh, rules and regulations. But how does the club use that to its advantage? Not just use it for commercial gains, but really to get the buy-in. Because without the fans, then there'll be no gate receipts. And who's, who, who's going to support the team anyway? Yeah. Well, I suppose there's several aspects to that. I mean, you touch on you touch on community aspects, and community uh, is at the, the heart of much of what we do at Everton. We have, uh, I think, it's widely accepted as the best community scheme in mm -hmm. the in the Premier League. Um, won many awards and work across the the local communities, um, and that's that's not about football. It's mm -hmm. about 
playing yes. the part of, mm -hmm. uh, of, a, of a responsible community club and, and helping the people of, of, of Liverpool mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. Um, but in terms of the, 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 the grassroots and the structure, um, we, we are lucky as an English football club in that, that, that every child grows up wanting to play football. Sure. Yeah. So there's a, there's a large grassroots mm -hmm. base to, to draw from. Um, the, 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 the difficult part, I suppose, is identifying and locating mm -hmm. the talented players yeah. uh, and then having a structure in place to develop them from. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you, you mentioned Wayne Rooney. I think he joined Everton as a, as a very young boy, yes. uh, sort of eight years old. Mm -hmm. And developing someone who's got a lot of ability at eight years old, giving him the support structures, the mm -hmm. coaching, the advice, the, the, the physical training, the, the, the psychological uh, training and development. When the club identifies a young talent, how does the legal play come into it? Because mm. I'm sure some sort of agreement, of course the child is a minor, mm. then you have to make the deal with the parents, or would an agent already be in place? Or? Yeah, no, well, agents aren't, uh, there are a set of regulations that apply to English football. Um, Currently, uh, the predominant ones are the ones that, that the Football Association has put in place, mm -hmm. and they don't permit, um, except in, in some circumstances, agents to be officially representing anyone in, under the age of 16. So at the age of, the age of eight or nine, there should not be an agent involved. Mm -hmm. um, but where the, the legal side comes in is the, 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 key, the key aspect for any football club is to have a player registered okay. with the association okay. and if they're not registered they can't, they can't yeah. play for you mm -hmm. and ultimately when you get to talk about the, the multi-million pound transfers mm -hmm. the thing you are transferring is the registration of the player to play okay. football from one club to another so in order to register the player you have to comply with certain rules uh, and in England we have different structures of, of young players so for the youngest players they, they are registered on, on as, as students um, uh, and we can only keep them registered for a certain period of time because they're, they're minors and they're not professionals they're not getting paid like professionals when they get to the age of 16 they can become scholars um, and sign a type of scholarship agreement um, and from the age of uh, 17 where we can enter into a, a contract where they become a, a, a full professional okay I have to go for the first break but once we are back maybe this since we mentioned it already, this multi-million pound transfer and a Liverpool uh, fan myself, I mean, Luis Torres transfer was, mm. was not wanted, but it was a huge sum of money. Yeah. So why is it skyrocketing? Is it the middleman and the agent making the game? What is there in the rules of the law? Is there a move to curb? And we heard that after this, maybe there's no need for a middleman because FIFA's new rule for 2015, for example, you don't need to be registered as an agent. Uh, mm. For example, like it is now, it's a different mm. kind mm. of way. So let's discuss that after this short break. I'm a diehard Liverpool fan, but uh, I'm also a rational one. So I'm here with Chris Anderson, the head of legal services for uh, Everton Football Club. And uh, Chris has helped paint the picture of how the rules and regulations uh, that governs the club in, in the Barclays Premier League, for example, also helps set up the way that everything is managed from mm. the grassroots level. Mm. There are ways to do it. And if you stick to it, it will become good. And there's also the community part. But now, Everywhere around the world, every time the season ends, mm. or even before that, people before are looking that, at definitely. transfer windows mm. and who's going to be the next million uh, transfer pounds, for example. So, is it the agents? Is it the club wanting as much profit? Is it the other club just wanting to sell more shirts and replicas of jerseys? What makes the price as high as it is now? Like eight million pound, 100 million pound maybe. So what's your point of view on that? Well, it's, it's uh, I suppose, supply and demand. There are not that many top-class football players. Mm -hmm. um, 
and a, a club may look at what it needs to what it needs to be improving in its team and 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 target a, a particular player um, and if that player is under contract to another club they will have to offer enough money to make it attractive for the club who currently has the player to transfer the registration to the other club um, of course if they're if they're not under contract then uh, as a matter of, of European law um, they can they can move mm -hmm. freely yeah. um, so if a player has come to the end of his contract he can move and there is no mm -hmm. transfer fee mm -hmm. but of course that doesn't always save the the club buying the player or mm -hmm. getting the player money because very often uh, the player's agent will ask for an increase in in salary or or bonuses because he's aware that the club has saved money by not having to pay a transfer fee I see. In, in that case sometimes there's accusation that the player sometimes whether they move or not it's out of their hands because the agents will tell them that you need to make this move because this is a much amount of money that's involved mm. so it defeats the purpose of football to some because you know the industry part of it is running far ahead of the game part of it mm. so what do you think about that shouldn't there be laws to cap the number of uh, the amount of transfer fees for example and stuff like that uh, well I'd, I'd be all for a cap on the, the amount of fees that Everton has to pay um, but I wouldn't be keen on a cap on the amount of fees we're allowed to receive mm -hmm. purely from a selfish okay. perspective right. um, but it, I mean I don't think there, there ever really can be a, a, a cap on yep. transfer fees as a, as a practical mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. in the same way I don't think they can they can they can be a cap on mm -hmm. Uh, prices paid for, for, for houses or prices paid for yep. cars, mm -hmm. it, it, something is only worth as much as someone else is willing to pay. It's um, up to the market then. Yeah, so if, some, you know, if, if someone is willing to pay 100 million for mm -hmm. a player mm -hmm. um, and someone is willing to sell a player for 100 million, then the, 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 the sure market will determine. Ever mm. Because if we see, sometimes I, I can see the similarities, Liverpool and Everton, they don't just splurge money for nothing, you know. It's, it's the right type of player, you know, some, if you have the oil money coming in, then people start buying a huge sum of, of uh, amount for a player, but uh, largely, smaller club has been struggling, bigger clubs has been thriving, because they can buy just about anyone they want. So that has been seen as the big divide in football, mm. even in the Barclays Premier League. Mm. So how, how do you look at that, because, you know, it gives the ability for a bigger club to know that they cannot be challenged for quite a number of years until mm. someone else comes and buy another club. But Everton, Liverpool has been plugging at it. Maybe now uh, Liverpool has got a, a bigger uh, company behind it from mm. the US and stuff, but Everton has remained uh, at, at that kind of working class club culture kind of motive where we won't just pay for anyone, mm. but we prefer a, a close, cohesive, well-knit team, and especially homegrown talents, mm. because that's the spirit that we have. So do you see this rivalry between values clashing because of the market forces? There are different approaches at different clubs. I mean, some, uh, some set their targets and ambitions and their approach a certain way, and some set it, some set it others. Um, but at but at Everton, I think we 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 do things the right way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a metric that um, we're we're quite proud of that, that that draws a very clear link in in team sport between um, the amount a team pays in wages to players, not, not, not transfer fees, yes, which wages. some people don't know, mm -hmm. but the amount paid in wages and where they finish in the league. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we are at Everton um, the, the, the one exception to that rule because, say for example, the, 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 in the 2012-13 season, mm -hmm. we had the 12th highest wage bill, yeah. um, but we finished sixth. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, the reason that we think we're able to do that is because we do we're, we're focused on being a football club, we're focused mm -hmm. on, on delivering as a football club and doing the things that contribute to success mm -hmm. on the pitch better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and really that comes from, uh, we're, we're unusual in that our, our chairman is a fan, mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a lifelong committed, passionate fan of Everton. So he always wants us to be 
uh, achieving the success. So Everton wouldn't have problem with the financial fair play regulation, for example. Well, financial fair play is 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 interesting. Um, it, it it doesn't. I mean, we are we aren't one of the clubs that would be um, obviously penalised by financial fair play because we we haven't breached. We haven't had yes. losses of a level that would put us in 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 breach of them. Um, but of course, we we would, uh, you know, be delighted to get investment mm -hmm. from uh, uh, someone wealthy from mm -hmm. the outside, and, okay. and and you know, if we we had that money, it would be okay. it would be terrific. A lot of people look at laws and rules, something to be afraid of, you know, something to guard mm. things about. But I would like to tap, tap your mind into it in the, in the next mm. segment after this short break. That um, it's, it actually builds value image right, for example, done right, help share it across the globe consistently at the quality level, even for replica shirts, for example. Mm -hmm. So I would like to tap your mind into it and I would like to get the secrets of why you are in Kuala Lumpur and this part of the world, for sure. example. Are there new ties being looked at and that's been cemented finally by the people who have the authority to sign the legal <laughs> papers? <laughs> that we'll discuss after this short break. You are still watching again Nawani and I'm speaking in English because I'm speaking to the Everton Football Club, represented by Chris Anderson. Chris, if I can go straight, we only have about five to six minutes. Okay. Uh, rules and regulations, image rights, for example, it creates value actually, especially mm -hmm. when you go global with it. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, we, th when you get down to it, um, the main things that football teams have to sell other than watching the match or, or attending the match is their name, their badge, their, 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 their image mm -hmm. um, and the ability to sell that depends on having those things correctly protected legally uh, but then also having the right legal contracts in mm -hmm. place to enable someone to to become an official sponsor mm -hmm. and for you to be able to prevent anyone else using your name in competition with them um, so that there is a there is a value there for that for that sponsor in uh, in you know, shirts or in Goodison Park or um, you know or any any other things uh, along those lines so that have se have seen you and you know your colleagues at Everton paying a visit to Southeast Asia for example mm. and every time we look at that blue shirt we see Southeast Asia on it. Mm. How did that happen? Well, we've, we, we have a, a very long-standing and successful um, friendship and partnership with, with, with Chang Beer, mm -hmm. who, who've been our sponsors for, for, for 10 years, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a, a relationship that, that you know, we, we, we are valued at the club and that we, uh, you know, we're delighted to, to, to partner with Chang. Um, but it comes about because they, uh, they, they, they are our, they're our sponsor and, and, and have been for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you think you can build more bridges through, you know, people are looking at uh, finding new talent mm. and if Asia is rising, commercially speaking, of course that's the market to be in mm. and for Barclays Premier League to exist and even for Everton Football Club or Liverpool Football Club to be successful, to cultivate that strong support and also harness the commercial means out of it would be in the short, medium and long term planning. We'd be delighted to welcome Malaysians to, to Goodison Park. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the, the, the reason I'm out here at the moment is, is because I was invited by, by one of our, uh, our prominent supporters uh, in Malaysia, uh, uh, Richard Wee of Richard Wee and Yip Law Firm, who organised a sports law conference okay. yesterday, which mm -hmm. was attended by Football Association of Malaysia, the AFC, mm -hmm. Professional Footballers Association Malaysia. And I was delivering a, a, a talk at that to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to speak to people people in, in football at Malaysia um, and I made a lot of uh, uh, good connections there and spoke to some 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 good people and mm -hmm. so it sounds like a, you know it's a very exciting time for football in Malaysia mm -hmm. not least of course the uh, the semi-final against yes, yes. Uh, against Vietnam mm -hmm. on Saturday which mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping when I'm back in the UK I can uh, I can watch on uh, watch yes. on the television and I'll be uh, supporting Malaysia <laughs> okay cool that's, that's <laughs> good to know um, um, maybe your own view of the ecosystem here, 
Because sometimes it's good to hear from mm. people who have made it at the highest level. You know, there's a reason why Barclays Premier League is one of the most commercially viable brand in the whole wide mm. world, for example. So how, what would your advice be, especially from making the implementation and the solidity of the rules, regulations and legal environment of it? Well, I mean, I was uh, I, I was chatting to the, uh, the Football Association of, of Malaysia yesterday, and it sounds like they've got some some excellent and mm. and, and very exciting plans uh, ahead of it. Um, and and I think we 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 at Everton would be delighted to to, to assist them with that. Mm. Uh, but I think anyone will tell you, far and away, the best thing to do to develop football um, is get kids playing with playing with a ball in the street, get as many kids yes. playing football as and you support can. support them with a good supporting ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you know. we forget that it's not just about playing, but the nutrition side, the sports psychology side, all those are, are there, right? You have to sign all those contracts. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, we do, <laughs> we, 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 we do all that, and we, uh, we think we do it uh, quite well at Everton and, okay. and produce some good um, players. Is there any hope for the TV rights not to go up, but you know, starting to play to a bit? Yeah. <laughs> because s s I, if I look at it, you know, a lot of us pay a lot of our disposable income sometimes just to make sure that we are in touch with our favourite team in the Barclays Premier League. Uh, hopefully you mean Everton by now. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's a, it's a few years off the, mm. the next TV auction, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. But, um, you know, I suppose clubs benefit from the, yes. the, the TV revenue, so we would, uh, we would hope that they go. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris Anderson, for making time. Um, you. Wherever you are in the world, we will remember you. And uh, I only have to say this to you, you will never walk alone on this. Oh. Football everywhere, even in Malaysia and South East Asia. So Thank you. Very, very, have a very strong following. Terima kasih. Antakan pandangan anda sendiri. Anda mungkin penyokong Everton atau tidak. Dan saya akan panjangkan kepada Chris Anderson. Uh, kepada pelbagai platform yang Astro Awal ini ada. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Atau terus buat turun aplikasi mudah alih iOS dan Android. Supaya anda boleh menonton episod agenda awal ini secara langsung di gadget mudah alih anda. Sekian, selamat malam dan jumpa lagi. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. No, that was great. We are.